Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. While working in gynae clinic, you might have seen several patients who present with history of recurrent miscarriages. They usually have history of DVT in legs and sometimes history of clot formation in other parts of the body as well. And that is what clicks our mind towards the diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome which is basically a disorder of immune system that causes an increased risk of blood clots in our body. It is also called Hugh syndrome. Uh, before moving any further, I would like you to subscribe our channel so that you get all the latest videos. Before discussing the clinical picture of antiphospholipid syndrome, let us discuss in detail its pathophysiology. So what happens as a result of certain triggers like infection, oxidative stresses and certain physical stresses, there is apoptosis of endothelial cells which exposes the phospholipid in the platelets and in the cell membranes. Now beta-2 glycoprotein targets the phospholipid found in these cell membranes and platelets. Once they get bound, a phospholipid protein complex is formed and a new epitope is uncovered, which subsequently becomes the target of autoantibodies resulting in adhesion and aggregation of platelets and the clot formation ultimately. Now, how to diagnose antiphospholipid syndrome? The diagnostic criteria is both clinical and laboratory. The clinical criteria include vascular thrombosis and placental morbidity. And the laboratory criteria include certain antibodies checking which I will discuss with you later. So when we discuss the clinical criteria, it means that there is clot formation in different parts of the body including the placenta resulting in thrombosis and infarcts at different level causing certain adverse condition. Okay, so when a patient with APLS presents, uh, the diagnostic criteria is that uh, there is a history of vascular thrombosis, means one or more episodes of arterial venous or small vessel thrombosis in the different parts of the body, including the brain and uh, also in the eyes, like a uh, patient may present with amaurosis fugus, retinal thrombosis, etc. She might give you the history of pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension, DVT. At cardiac level, there might be history of Leibman sac, vulvopathy, MI, and diastolic dysfunction. There might be hemolytic anemia or hematologic thrombocytopenia, or there might be levito reticularis. So all these things uh, indicate that there is ongoing thrombosis in any part of the body. But as a gynecologist, you specifically need to make it clear whether we have any uh, placental morbidity-like symptoms or not. Okay, so in that we will ask about the history of miscarriages, history of preterm. Okay, so the diagnostic criteria is that uh, there uh, must be one or more unexplained death of a morphologically normal fetus at or beyond 10 weeks of gestation. Okay, so unexplained death at or beyond 10 weeks of gestation is the first uh, criteria related to the placental morbidity. Second criteria is about uh, preterm birth, one or more preterm birth of of a morphologically normal neonate before 34 weeks of gestation uh, because of eclampsia or severe preeclampsia uh, or recognized uh, features of placental insufficiency. So you have to make sure whether the preterm birth was caused as a result of these factors or something else. Third criteria is about history of miscarriages. So three or more unexplained consecutive spontaneous miscarriages before 10 weeks of gestation with maternal anatomical or hormonal abnormalities and paternal and maternal chromosomal causes excluded. Okay, so that was all about the clinical criteria. Now coming to the laboratory criteria for the diagnosis of antiphospholipid syndrome. Okay, so we uh, should check basically the three antibodies level. First is that, that of the lupus anticoagulant that is uh, that should be present in the plasma on two or more occasion at least 12 weeks apart. Second one is that of the 
anti-cardiolipin antibody, anti-cardiolipin antibody of IgG or IgM isotypes in the serum or plasma on two or more occasions at least 12 weeks apart. Third is that of anti-beta-2 glycoprotein 1 antibody of IgG or IgM isotype in the serum or plasma present on two or more occasions at least 12 weeks apart. Okay, so these tests should be done in such a way that uh, once we do them, we have to repeat them at 12 weeks interval as well. And if positive, then our uh, laboratory criteria is fulfilled. Now coming to the treatment of antiphospholipid syndrome in pregnancy. Very important to note that uh, if we have uh, no thrombosis of pregnancy loss or no treatment, um, then we can go for um, aspirin 75 milligram or just the conservative management. But if there is history of thrombosis, we have to go for aspirin plus low molecular weight heparin. And if we have previous uh, recurrent first trimester miscarriages, then you have to give aspirin plus minus low molecular weight heparin depending upon the uh, clinical situation. But if there is history of IUD, intrauterine death or um, intrauterine growth retardation or severe preeclampsia, then we definitely have to go for aspirin and low molecular weight heparin both. Now the question arises when to start aspirin and low molecular weight heparin. Okay, so about this, it's written uh, in the books and in the guidelines that start aspirin when the pregnancy is confirmed and low molecular weight have to be started when uh, the fetal heart uh, are seen on the ultrasound. And uh, if we start aspirin alone, then uh, take home baby rate is only 40%. But if aspirin and low molecular heparin um, are started combinedly, then take home baby rate is 70%. Now, some studies have disputed improved pregnancy outcome with low molecular weight heparin compared with aspirin alone. I would like to discuss with you a specific situation in which there is previous thrombosis with or without warfarin. So, uh, in such cases, if the patient is on maintenance warfarin, then transfer to aspirin and low molecular weight happen as soon as the pregnancy is confirmed. But if the patient is not on warfarin, then aspirin uh, from the preconception uh, period and commence low molecular weight heparin once the pregnancy is confirmed. And increase low molecular weight heparin to BD at 16 to 20 weeks of gestation. So what to do when there is history of recurrent miscarriages of less than 10 weeks? Uh, if patient is not on prior anticoagulant therapy, then start aspirin 75 milligram once a day from preconception time. But if there is prior miscarriage with aspirin alone, then start aspirin 75 milligram once daily from preconception time and low molecular weight heparin in oxyparin 40 milligram once a day once the pregnancy is confirmed. Now, how to manage APLS in case of previous adverse outcomes? Now, if there is any history of late fetal loss, neonatal death or adverse outcome due to preeclampsia, uh, fetal growth restriction or abruption, in that case, we have to start aspirin 75 milligram once a day from, pre from preconception and low molecular weight heparin once the pregnancy is confirmed. Now, when to stop the treatment of antiphospholipid syndrome? Consider stopping happening if 24-week uterine artery Doppler is normal. Okay, because uh, this is the time when we um, are sure that miscarriage is not going to happen and the improved birth rate is due to decreased miscarriages. And by doing uterine artery Doppler, now you have uh, confirmed that the, there is no placental morbidity. So you can consider stopping low molecular weight happening. Uh, looking at the whole clinical situation. Okay, thank you so much. That was a little bit description about antiphospholipid syndrome. Allah.